You have read the title, I know the title. Today we're gonna to be talking about A-level English literature. Now, if you are a GCSE student and you're watching this video and you are thinking, can I take something from this video? Can I, can I watch this video? It, you definitely can. However, this is tailored to English literature students. So there are some things in this video that won't be necessary or applicable to you. However, you definitely, 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 definitely can take something from this video. So if you are watching this video, I am guessing that you are either currently an English literature student, you are thinking about studying A-level English literature, or you are going to be studying A-level English literature. When I started out in a English teacher. I was an E grade student for a good six months. The first half of year 12, I was an E grade student. And then I got a B at the end of year 12. And now as a university student, I currently hold an A in English literature. So how did I go from that E? to an A. Like how, how did I do that and how can you do that too? I studied A level biology, chemistry and English literature. If you know anyone that is a chem student or you are a chem student, then click right in this corner. I have a video on how I got an A star in A level chemistry. So this video is gonna be split up into three main sections, which is learning, revising and essay writing. And at the end as well, I do wanna give um, specific advice to year 12s and year 13s. The example that I studied at Excel, however, the examples are quite similar. The only difference is what book you're studying for what component. My first exam was the drama exam and this was composed of Shakespeare and pre or post war. At my school, we did post war and we studied Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire. My Shakespeare essay was for Othello and it was worth 35 marks and my A Streetcar Named Desire essay was worth 25 marks. My second exam was my prose exam and we did Science and Society where we were comparing Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to Margaret Atwood's A Handmaid's Tale and this whole paper was worth 45 marks. My third exam was my poetry exam. Our poetry exam consisted of two anthologies a post-2000 anthology and the romantic period. Now, the read of the romantic period is the difference between the romantic period and the romantics. So for the first essay of this exam, which was the post-2000, you had to compare an unseen poem to a poem that you already know. And that essay was worth 30 marks. And then the next section of that paper is the romantic period. These are very, very old poems. And that was also 30 marks. And then the fourth kind of exam kind of ish is coursework. There is coursework in A-level English literature and your coursework is actually worth 20% of your grade. So whether I mention something that you're studying or not in this video, this video is not just for Edexcel students or for students who studied the same books as me or anything like that. You can literally take anything that I say in this video and transduce it into whatever you are studying. Okay, so on to the first section, which is learning. <laughs> So the first thing that I decided to start doing a little bit more was reading. Now, apart from actually reading the text that you're gonna be studying, reading around the text is also very, 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 very important. Read your books, read your plays, read them, read them. You can tell when someone hasn't read it. Like you can genuinely tell when someone has not read their book, read their text, and your teachers will actually give you things to read as well. Read everything that they told you to read, read. That's what it is, read. And also you want to have read every single text minimum twice, especially the small play ones as well. For me, it was The Streetcar Named Desire. It was a very thin, very short, because it's a play, it's not meant to be a book. I made it my mission to read it at least four times. It was easy. You can literally read it within a week or two so that I like knew it inside out. And you're gonna have one of those really thin sort of plays slash books at A Little English Literature. Rereading whenever is possible is money, guys. When I used to read it a second time, I would actually notice things that I didn't see before. Now in A Level English literature, all of your exams are open book. You will have access to everything that you need to have access to. You do not have time. Time is your enemy in English literature. You know, we'll be talking about time later on in this video today, but you want to make sure that when you're walking in there, you already have quotes in your head or you have pages that you would go to. You do not want to be sitting there looking for quotes. Something that really helped me to carry on rereading my book was to listen to an audiobook whilst I read it. And that's what I did for The Handmaid's Tale. I would listen to the audiobook and read the book as well and highlight through and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that helped me to carry on like rereading. Next point I really want to highlight is listening in class. I feel like you want to take every single point that anybody makes seriously. Keep everything, any worksheet, any, any piece of paper, anything that your teacher gives you guys, keep do not toss it away keep everything i will be talking about organization later on in the video as well but keep 
everything God, it helped me it really helped me that was my motto when i started sixth form to keep everything and when it got to the end of my sixth form journey it was so useful the fact that i did that like guys i have a whole bag of let me show you i have a whole bag full of sixth form resources guys look this is a whole bag of my sixth form resources it's just literally everything from sixth form look at the first thing is something from english something from english this is this is chemistry this is chemistry <sighs> Another thing about learning and utilizing your resources is using your PowerPoints. PowerPoints are a great way to learn and I feel like they are definitely overlooked. Revising with PowerPoints was really, really helpful and I don't know why a lot of people don't know about it. Guys, honestly, use your PowerPoints. Ask your teacher for the PowerPoints. However, if you feel like you don't find your teacher's PowerPoints useful, then you can go on the website called tes.com, test.com, where there's loads of PowerPoints on there. You can just look for whatever you're studying and find something there from other teachers as well. Okay, now my last point in learning is knowing your mark scheme and assessment objectives. An assessment objective is technically what an examiner is looking for in your essay, like a criteria technically. In different techniques and skills that they want to see in an essay writer yeah they're very 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 important now when i went to go do research for all the other examples apart from edX or so aqa and ocr i saw that all the assessment objectives are the same and that they're actually set by the examination board of qual now in the rest of the video i'm going to be saying aos instead of assessment objective that's what many people do so i'm going to say a01 a02 a3 a4 instead of assessment objective one assessment objective two assessment objective three do you get it? Do you get it? Okay. Now there are five different AOs and there are different levels to these assessment objectives as well. AO1 is articulate informed personal and creative responses to literary text using associated concepts and terminology and coherent, accurate written expression. <laughs> They just mean, what argument are you putting across? What are you talking about? What point are you making? That's literally what it means. AO2, analyze ways in which meanings are shaped in literary text. AO3, demonstrate understanding of the significance and influence of the context in which literary texts are written and received. AO4, explore connections across literary texts to so comparisons. And AO5, explore literary texts informed by different interpretations. So what other people have said about what you are studying. And different AOs are applied to different exams. For example, my pros exam had AO 1, 2, 3 and 4 but didn't have AO 5 and my drama exam had AO 1, 2 and 3 and didn't have AO 4. Okay so now I'm gonna get into the second section which is revising. Now some of these things I will say you may find helpful and you may not find helpful but the aim of the game is just to find out what is helpful and what isn't. The only way you can do that is if you try everything there's some things that i did my friends didn't really find helpful and there's some things that they did that i didn't find helpful so it's really you know trial and error <laughs> Necessary. So the first one is reading around your text. Reading, oh my gosh, degree level English literature students are required to read loads. So just implement a little bit of that into your A-level English literature routine. Read what other people say about what you are learning about. I would recommend reading other people's dissertations, reading other people's theses, theses, theses. theses. This is reading other people's theses, other people's essays, reading, just reading around. What I like to use to read a little bit more about my text was the British Library online. So I'll go in there and I'll type in maybe like Shakespeare's Othello and I would see what other people have said about it and I will just go through it from there. And also along with reading what other people have said is also read summaries and reviews as well about your text. But do this after after you have read your book. Some people just did this and didn't even read their books. I mean, I personally don't suggest it, but <laughs> read this after. The two websites that I used the most to read summaries and reviews type stuff was Lit Charts and Sparknotes. I read these a lot just to get a greater perspective or to, um, clear up some misconceptions about anything now my teacher did really advise us not to use spark notes and lit charts too heavily and that was because when you do over revise english literature it can be very detrimental to your grade because when you see some good points on these websites which you will see you'll see some really good points you'll be like wow that's really sophisticated that's a really good point i have to have that in my essay you then start to have this mindset where you find points really really good points and you just want to like just put them in your essay and it might have nothing to do with the question 
so the reason why my teacher told us not to use it too heavily is so that we didn't fall into that pit hole next part is wider reading now this is different to reading around your text wider reading is specifically for ao3 contextual it is so important to do wider reading not just because of course you have to do it but because it will genuinely help you to get to know the book a little bit more better ao3 so important when i started to understand the significance and the importance of assessment objective three my grades got my grades literally got better like when i started taking it a lot more seriously so one thing that i would definitely suggest you do some research into it was there any movements around the time that this person made this text what were the movements what was going on in that world that would have stimulated them to sit down with a pen and write what they're writing but yeah my favorite place to go to like i said was the british library i went there loads for wider reading a lot of people do incorporate context in their essays okay so the next thing i want to talk about is critics now just to make, make sense that after i'm talking about reading other people's essays reading other people's dissertation just reading what other people have said that we talk about critics which is ao5 so what the mark scheme says about ao5 is explore literary text informed by different interpretations so you will need these critics as well so if you do do these wider readings and you do see something that you know catches your eye or something make sure that you write the person's name down and you try and remember a quote or two from whatever you just read so that you can incorporate it into your essay we're going to talk a little bit more about critics and AO4 in the essay writing section of this video now what do you do with everything you've just read well next part I want to talk about is creating character profiles I think that you should actually revise characters instead of revising themes a character question can be a specific character so how Shakespeare portrays Babantio or how Shakespeare portrays Babantio's relationship with Amelia I would get a picture of a character for example for a street coming desire Blanche and I would stick her in the middle you can just write their name you don't have to go to the extra links that I went to I'm, I'm extra I stuck her in the middle and then I just created a bubble around her and then from there I created four different sections and the four different sections were the four different assessment objectives that I need that I have to incorporate in the essay now you will not always need four for this exam where I was talking about Blanche I didn't need four so I'll just make three sections one section be AO1 another section be AO2 and the bottom section would be AO3 remember AO1 is your argument AO2 is the techniques the creator used and AO3 is your context and I would always start with either AO2 or AO3 more time I would start with AO2 for my drama exam when it came to revising so for a street kind of desire I actually start with AO2 with dramatic techniques I would look at how the creator has portrayed this character whatever the creator does whatever techniques they have used to do something that is a o Two, AO2 isn't just metaphors and similes. There's more to it. It's not just, you know, techniques that have names. So for example, a character called Stanley in A Streetcar Named Desire. I kind of realized that Tennessee William portrayed Stanley as like a hero at the start, but then at the end, he becomes this monster. And I feel like Tennessee William did this a lot through Stanley's demeanor. So I wrote that down and then I'd write down quotes in different places where Stanley's demeanor would change over time and where he would go from an egalitarian hero to a toxic male who is a rapist. So I have just said that Tennessee William portrays Stanley in this sort of way. So what themes can come from that AO2? And I would say, okay, cool. Well, maybe masculinity or gender inequality or first impressions and all that kind of stuff. And then that's when I would write in my AO1 box. In this way, you are revising characters and you're revising themes. Now, if you feel like you should start from AO1 or you should start from AO2 or you start from AO3, whatever assessment objective you find easier to um, portray in your essays, I really feel like that's the one that you should start with. So if you feel like you are really hitting it in AO1 but you're kind of you know not hitting it in AO2 start with AO1 and then go into AO2 from AO1 if you feel like AO1 is the best for you for me AO2 was the best and so from my AO2 I want to make an AO1 so the next one is practice planning your essays and writing your essays as well I think that you cannot and you should not go two weeks without having written at least one essay. We would actually get essays every single week and sometimes we'd have two essays to do because I had two different teachers. So we had essays a lot. Line essays, I really wish is something that I took more seriously and something that I did a lot more than I, oh my God, go away. It's something that I really wish I did a lot more than I actually did as an A-level English teacher student. Now, why should you practice planning your essays? Like I said, guys, time, time is your enemy. Time is your enemy in English literature. So it is so important that you practice planning your essays so that you have a structure to go from once you're actually writing your essay. I do not know any English literature student who didn't plan their essays. I don't know any essay writing students who didn't plan their essays. I know every 
everybody, everybody planned their essays, guys. Everybody planned their essays. My teacher suggested giving 20% of the time that you have for that essay to planning the actual essay. So for example, for my prose exam, which was me comparing my handmaid's tale to Frankenstein, that was an hour and 15 minutes. So that's 75 minutes. Now 20% of that 75 minutes is 15 to 20 minutes. So I would dedicate between 15 and 20 minutes of my hour and 15 to planning the essay. And I would plan every single paragraph. I would divide a whole page into like five different sections. The first row that would be in the middle was my argument. What argument am I trying to make with this question in this essay. So this meant that I did not forget my argument because that was a weakness of mine. I would make an argument and completely forget about it mid essay. And then the next boxes would be each paragraph. Within the boxes, I would then plan A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3. A1, A2, A3. Not gonna lie, I rarely ever wrote four paragraphs, ever. You have to have minimum two body paragraphs. So you have to have your introduction, minimum two body paragraphs. Some people were able to do five. <laughs> how then your conclusion if you don't have a conclusion it's not really that deep but have you you want to plan the conclusion so make sure you are practice planning your essays so you start your essay strong have a structure have a structure make sure you plan your essay make sure you practice planning your essay all of these things will help with time management okay and i want to touch on a little bit about balancing content and being organized a little bit as well i actually had a wallet you can have a folder if you want but i had a wallet for each tech i'd have a wallet for shakespeare and i have a wallet for tennessee and i have a wallet for franking and this meant that i kept all my papers okay so the last section of revising i want to talk about poetry now poetry poetry was my weakness oh my god poetry said no to me in year 10 and it's been saying no ever since and i've been flopping ever since poetry did not like me so my teacher actually gave us a list of things to look out for when you first see a poem especially if you've seen an unseen poem as well. okay so how to use contextual research to get higher marks and this is something that again like i said when i started realizing the importance of context in ao3 my my grade <laughs> It was an exponential growth. So one thing that I started doing was actually kind of mixing AO3 with AO2 and AO1 and all that kind of stuff in my essays. And if you do that, you kind of start hitting the level four and level five marks a little bit more because you're more critical at that point. The social evils presented by the romantics was the fault of the government and the law bound society individuals live in. So here I incorporated AO3 into my AO1. So my point was social evils were actually created by the government and the romantics present this in their poem da, 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 da. and the poem that i was talking about was from william blake's london next thing that i want to talk about with essay writing is making references to the genre of what you are studying do not forget about the genre and the form of your text as well something that i always aim to do throughout the whole of english literature is ask myself why did this creative choose to present their point or what they wanted to do through this form why didn't shakespeare write books why did he write plays why did mary shelley not write poems like her husband so why did they do this why did they choose to use this form of literature once you harness that and you understand that and you portray that in an essay it's actually very very sophisticated and it's very important if you have a drama exam an exam where you're dealing with plays to watch a play watch it and then you take a lot of props and settings quite seriously and then you talk about that guys talk about that talk about the props talk about the settings a second thing in the essay that is important is embedding your quotes but yeah those are the different sections explained but yeah that's all i can say for a level english literature i do hope you guys enjoyed this video if you found it informative please let me know but yeah thank you so much for watching this video bye